we don't know who we're fighting. If there's anyone out there who thinks we're confused about who our enemies are, the Orlando killer, one of the San Bernardino killers, the Fort Hood killer, they were all U.S. citizens. Calling a threat by a different name does not make it go away. Calling a threat by a different name does not make it go away. Calling a threat by a different name does not make it go away. Since before I was president, I've been clear about how extremist groups have perverted Islam to justify terrorism. Since before I was president, I've been clear about how extremist groups have perverted Islam to justify terrorism. I have repeatedly called on our Muslim friends and allies at home and around the world to work with us to reject this twisted interpretation of one of the world's great religions. I have repeatedly called on our Muslim friends and allies at home and around the world to work with us to reject this twisted interpretation of one of the world's great religions. We had our president in the last speech say, oh, these are not really Islamic people because they believe in peace. Really? Hmm. That's not the Quran that I read. And then we have Pope Francis said, if they're genuine, they don't really believe in all of this killing. Really? Frick Salah, I have just studied 40 different books on Islam. I know what I'm talking about. And I found 273 verses in the Quran. 164 that talk about jihad killing until they gain control of the world. And another 109 about beheading people. Jack will deliver them to us once again from the Quran, Jack. Seize them and kill them, unbelievers, wherever you find them, Surah 489. If you encounter in war those who disbelieve, strike their necks, behead them, Surah 74. Give firmness to the believers who are Muslims and still tear into the hearts of the unbelievers, all non-Muslims. You smite them above their necks and smite all their fingertips off them, Surah 812. Strike terror into the hearts of the enemies of God and your enemies and others, Surah 860. When the sacred months are over, slay the idolaters wherever you find them, arrest them, besiege them, and lie in ambush everywhere for them, Surah 95. Believers, make war on the infidels who dwell around you. Deal firmly with them, Surah 9, 123. When you encounter the infidels, strike off their heads, Surah 47, 4. And if we fall into the trap of painting all Muslims with a broad brush and, imp and imply that we are at war with an entire religion... We are at war with radical Islam. <laughs> Absolutely. He still doesn't get it. We don't have religious tests here. Our founders, our Constitution, our Bill of Rights are clear about that.
There's not been a moment in my seven and a half years as president where we have not been able to pursue a strategy because we didn't use the label radical Islam. Not once has an advisor of mine said, man, if we really use that phrase, we're going to turn this whole thing around. Not once. We now have proposals from the presumptive Republican nominee for president of the United States. That's correct. To bar all Muslims from emigrating to America. Temporarily, till we get a handle on what you've done. That's not the America we want. It doesn't reflect our democratic ideals. in mind that the American dream endures. And you know, what struck me when I first met Barack was that even though he had this funny name, and even though he had grown up all the way across the continent in Hawaii, his family was so much like mine. He was raised by grandparents who were working class folks just like my parents and by a single mother who struggled to pay the bills just like we did. And like my family, they scrimped and saved so that he could have opportunities that they never had for themselves. And Barack and I were raised with so many of the same values. Like, you work hard for what you want in life. That your word is your bond, that you do what you say you're going to do. Absolutely. who still doubts that America is a place where all things are possible, who still wonders if the dream of our founders is alive in our time, who still questions the power of our democracy. Tonight is your answer. Remember, I'll be the one you won't forget.